Um, so I'll call the meeting to order at 7.35. First item on the agenda would be acceptance of minutes. We have two, two minutes that need to be approved. We have the regular minutes from last monthly meeting and then we have the special meeting minutes. So are there any additions, deletions or corrections to, to last the last month's monthly minutes? I have a motion to accept them. Make a motion. Okay, Ed, second. Second. Okay, second, Bill. Okay, all in favor, just raise your hand. Yep. Okay. Now the next monthly, or the next minutes of the special meeting that we had two weeks ago, are there any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hey, Kevin, just a heads up, not in regards to that, I apologize. I have Ken Martin on speakerphone. Okay. Patching through, he's having a hard time, so I may. <laughs> Kevin, I am present now. I'm sorry that I had some difficulty with this new Droid phone, so I'm, I'm here. Yeah, no problem. No, we, we see you're trying to sign in and connect to audio, and, and it's not connecting, so we can see that here. Okay. Uh, again, does anybody have any additions, deletions, or corrections to the special meeting that we had two weeks ago, the minutes of the special meeting? No? Okay. Can I have a um, vote of accept? Anybody vote to accept it? I'll make a motion. Take second. Time. I'll second. Mike. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Okay. No move. Okay. Meeting minutes of the last monthly meeting and minutes of the special session two weeks ago have been approved. Correspondence. Laura, has anybody sent anything since? since four o'clock today or before four o'clock today? No correspondence, no. Okay. So this should be, should be fairly quick. Old business, is there anything under old business? Does New the, business? Does the special meeting last time count as old business? No, because it was a special meeting. I, if, if you wanna bring something up, I'd bring it up under new business. Okay. So if no one has anything under old business, let's move on to new business. Does anybody have any new business they'd like to bring up? Please. Mike, did you want to, Mike, you're on, you're muted. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm mute. Did you want to bring something up? Yeah, so can we uh, discuss the special meeting? Yes. Okay, can we start off with why there was a special meeting? When we normally don't have a special meeting for an event of any type, unless it's something emergent, because it would be like if I decided I wanted to have a party outside and I'd call, I'd call and ask for a special meeting. I don't understand why there was a special meeting. Well, I, I can answer that. I actually called for the special meeting only as a result of that email that I got on a Friday, I got that email on a Friday and I forwarded on to you people, you know, minutes after I got it. And I said, I got this email. I will call Dimitri, find out more about it and see what's happening. So when I called, when I called Dimitri, um, you know, he just filled me in on how they had been talking with the administration and it was in regards to that email where they wanted to have the function at the end of September. And I said, obviously they have to approve that for us first and there's not going to be time for the next meeting. So any, so this kind of sets a bad precedence moving forward then. That's the thing that kind of worried me about having a special meeting because anybody could say, I need a special meeting now because we don't normally do that. Right, Kevin? No, and, 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 and you're correct. And I think what, what makes this what makes the special meeting easier in these times is because of Zoom. Like we probably wouldn't have had a special meeting if we had to call everybody in. True. So we've been spoiled with this Zoom. And what happened was I am just I am the chairman. I don't have any more power 
than any of you, I just run the meetings. So when an email sent to me asking me what I would do or what the commission would do, I can't answer for you people. And when I call Dimitri and understand that this has been a dialogue between Mr. Garrix and the administration, I can't make a call on my own. So we decided at that point in time, the only thing we can do, to, I can't just squash it on my own and say, we're not going to have it because it's not going to be in time of the meeting. Out of courtesy for the administration that, that I understand had been in talks and negotiation with um, Mr. Garrick. So I said to Dimitri, geez, we need to have a special meeting. What's the best way to go about this? He he then said the best thing is to contact Laura, who contacted you people to see what the best time was to see if it was feasible. And then that's pretty much how that's pretty much how it happened. I didn't want to make a call or be a Scrooge and say, no, we, we can't have it. So it wasn't like anything was behind the commission's back from the administration. It was solely me who called that meeting. Okay. Does that sound right, Dee? Yes. And, and hopefully that doesn't set a precedent. And it can't set a precedent because I still have to call the meeting or the commission has to call the meeting. So th this was, I think we're spoiled with Zoom to be able to get everybody there that quickly. And the fact that it had been an ongoing thing and they neglected to inform us earlier and there was, there was a time limit I said, this is really the only thing to do because I, I didn't feel comfortable making a call by myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyone else on that topic? So it's Ken, Ken Martin. Hi, Ken. Um, hi there. So what I don't understand is um, where did the email, who sent the email to you? That email came to me from Mr. Garrick's. Apparently, someone must have told him, you know, down the road that this can't happen unless you have approval from the Car Parks Commission. So that email that I sent you came to me from Mr. Garrick's, which that just, you know, totally hit me out of the blue. I sent it on to you people and said, I will find out about this more from Dimitri. I actually was going to call Dimitri on Friday, which was, which was the following day, I believe. He sends me a text saying, can you call me later today to discuss something? I text him back. I said, yes, I need to call you about this comedy routine at Indian Ledge. And his, he texted back, that's what we need to talk about. So it was, like I said, it was just one of those things out of the blue. Well, that I understand. Uh, it was out of the blue and um, things do come out of the blue, more so now than ever. Um, but the, if the email came from who would be the applicant, um, I would think that the discussion at that point would be to the applicant that you've missed the meeting, you need to come to the next meeting. Well, the only, it, and I understand what you're saying, Ken, but the only reason that made that different was if you read the email, it said that they had been in discussions with the administration, you know, the, the, the first selectman, and I don't know, I, I think the, the town attorney, if, if uh, the other person that was in there, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, it was it was Vicky and someone else that was in there. I, I can't recall what was on the that email specifically. But I said, "Geez, I, I don't want to just squash this if they've been if they've been speaking to this. I can't speak for the commission." I understand, but you know, and I could almost understand if if you're making a decision based on, let's say, a courtesy to the administration, but. It sounds to me, it seems to me that based on what you're saying is that there was a lot of dialogue, there was a lot of negotiation and discussion about this event before it even came to you or the commission, which is not procedure. It's as simple as that. So my, I guess my point with this, and I did speak with Vicki about it, um, that in the future, I think that the administration needs to um, forward any requests for events at the park or any of the parks to the commission first and foremost and then we could decide whether or not we want to have a special meeting or whether or not we want to put them on the agenda before they bring this fellow down this road where he thinks that this could all work out based on his 
these discussions or negotiations with the town. Uh, and then we, we, we sort of solve this problem earlier on so that there's not a precedent that's been set, which is what Mike is referring to. This is a precedent. So I'm really, I'm concerned about that for the future. And I'm just hoping that if we, if we call a special meeting, I mean, I jumped in and I said, I'll be, I'll be happy to be part of a special meeting. I really didn't know what it was about, what it was about. When I found out, I thought, well, I would have changed my mind about participating in a special meeting or even recommending that you not have a special meeting for this particular purpose. It's not an emergency. The guy missed his date and it's as simple as that. I'm all for entertainment in the parks. Now I want to open up the parks. I want to see the concerts. I want to see people playing in the parks, kids playing in the parks, but this is just a jump start for someone and an accommodation. And I just don't understand why. So I'll just leave it like that. My letter speaks for itself. I think everybody got a copy and um, I'll, I'll finalize my comments there. Okay, Ken, thank you. Agreed. I think, you know, what you say makes, makes total sense. And I, I'm assuming that the administration maybe has learned from this also that when they do get a request from that, that they send it, you know, right out to us as soon as possible before they, before they even start to negotiate. Great. Anybody else have any comments on this topic? Okay. Moving on, anything else under new business? Yeah. yeah. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Mike. Mike. Okay, my other question was, what, what took place with this Boston, I mean, Bridgeport Symphony Orchestra thing? Okay. Could you, could you discuss yeah, that yes. a little bit? Uh, I'm glad you, you brought that up and um, I had discussion with Dimitri about this and that this is something that morphed from a smaller um, production type of thing to, to kind of quite a, a large production. And um, Dimitri, if you can kind of explain the chronology of, of what happened. Yes. Well, it actually began in March uh, when uh, I, I was approached uh, from uh, some people from the from the Bridgeport Symphony looking for a venue. So the way the Gr uh, Greater Bridgeport Symphony works is that they have uh, season ticket holders, patrons, and you know there's so many performances that you know take place in the course of, of a year. Uh, the Klein being closed down completely prohibited that, and then back in early March, nothing was was possible anywhere. So we had been, you know, going back and forth in uh, a number of different ways as the, the the restrictions lessened and increased and went all over the place, um, where they were, you know, just see it, simply looking for a place to perform uh, for a very small group of their season ticket holders. They would be willing to essentially fit, uh, pay the fees when the time was appropriate from the state health department, and they were looking at. 150, maybe 200 people tops. So based on that alone, that was in the, our, our purview of being able to allow for an event like that in the park system uh, out of the office directly. And, and then I'll, you know, many months went by and nothing took place. And there were you know, more conversations that were taking place across a lot of thresholds. It's the same sort of thing that actually happened with Mr. Garrick's. Uh, and I can combine both of those uh, events because it has a very similar chronology. Uh, what originally started off as a, a, a concept that might take place on the town hall green, uh, a small number of people, you know, how does that work? Then, you know, somehow morphs over time into something much larger. So the, the greater symphony issue at some point or another actually went above and beyond the 200. I learned when the, you know, that happened almost in the 11th hour. So, well, that's not anything that I have the, you know, the, 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 the rights to give authorization. But at that point, it already had so much legs and momentum. It was nearly impossible to stop without literally bringing it to you to having a, a, full, a, a full review after everything had already been set up. So at that point, it was 
you know, in, in I think the, the event's best interest and everybody's best interest with my apologies to the commission to just, to just ride this through. The, 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 the mistake was mine at that point. When it, you know, and then when I mean it, it was like days before the event uh, when we discovered, well, wait a minute, what are you talking about? 201, 300, 400, it, 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 was, it was impossible. So that's entirely my fault. Uh, by rights, that entire event, if it was uh, considered by the proper protocols, would have been a direct presentation to whatever source. That source would have reviewed it, whether or not this was a uh, in-house office decision or if the event had to go to the commission. Anything over 200 is in your purview. Same kind of thing happened around uh, Joe Garrick's event. The, the initial conversations were all very small. Then it was, well, I can get this event and this will be much larger and da 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 I'm like, I'm not making this mistake twice. Uh, and that's actually what prompted, you've got to go see the commission. We're not, we're, not doing, we're not doing it twice. And that's what was the reason why we actually had the, the special meeting. If there was a possibility of something that actually had so much uh, you know, already invested in it to still get the proper approvals and consideration, uh, then, then we needed to do so because it was, it was very different. It wasn't over five months. It was over a couple of weeks. So there was still time to uh, see it through. So that's, that's sort of the history of the, uh, the Greater Bridgeport Symphony. On the back end, the, the event went off flawlessly. Uh, if, I'm not sure if any of you were actually present uh, Show the pictures. They had it, pictures it, it, on the Connecticut. Very, very well. I mean, everybody present were, were thrilled. The, the, the seating was quite amply spaced. Uh, parking worked out very well. It, it, it was a very good event. Okay, thank you, Dimitri. If, if, if I may add something, when I was discussing this, with Dimitri and, and he was bringing up the fact that oh, it was under 200. So theoretically the town could handle it or approve the recreation department could handle it or approve it themselves without permission or authorization from the commission. I did point out to him that this was a for-profit event and anything that's for-profit in the parks has to come before the commission. So, and, and, and he said, I, I think a light bulb went off, he goes, you're right. I didn't really even think about that. I was just thinking a number. So when, when he talks about the 200 threshold, that's 200 threshold if it's something sponsored by the recreation department. If it's something that's mm -hmm. an outside entity coming in, selling tickets and making profit off our parks, even though they pay the fee, that's something that we have to make a decision on. Mm -hmm. yep. how, do we fix, how do we fix this moving forward so this doesn't happen twice in one month? Yeah, and you just have it come to the commission for approval, whatever it is. Well, I mean, that, that's been in place, but it didn't happen. Well, twice. We're, we're talking about moving forward. I am. So, so, okay. so, is there any special consideration given that we're still in a pandemic that we need to lessen that number from the 200 to a smaller number like some other communities like Fairfield have done? Where, you know, I understand Fairfield's like 25 or 50 people have to go. You but know, that to determines their... the size of the venue determines what the number is, not us. I mean, it's guidelines. Right, so but our guideline, not... right, the guideline right now is 200. Anything under 200, Dimitri's office can approve it. Is there any reason to believe we should change that during the pandemic to a lower number so that we are brought in on events such as these? That would be fine. I'll be honest, I don't think that that's prudent. The reason we ended up going to 200 in the first place are any number of events from a, from a concert on the green. It's, it's the, it is the number threshold where we have to bring in police and so forth. COVID is a, an enormous player in all of this and the way that the events have actually been coming forward. These are anomalies. Uh, you know, we've been doing these for forever uh, in exactly this manner. Um, trying to run all of our, you know, the varied events that we do below 200 would be very cumbersome, quite frankly. Uh, as I said, 
the the event if it was let's just say you know uh, as it was originally presented by the Greater Bridgeport Symphony, uh, if there weren't delays, if there weren't gaps over months and months where there were, you know, you can have no one in the park, you can have 10 people in the park. I, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm sure you've lived all of the iterations of the protocols as they have uh, gone through fits and starts and are continuing to do so in, a, in any number of different ways. I think you see a very different outcome and what's presented, how it's presented. But where you know you're you're looking at the world upside down and rules that don't correspond to anything that we normally deal with uh, for just this the general public, uh, I think it's a very different animal. Uh, again, to to try to give you the the assurance that that's not what's going to be happening moving forward. It's the the what was generating the special meeting. The, the, again, the, as soon as there was the slightest idea that, hi, this is a for-profit event, the, Mr. Garrick was looking at something that was far over 200, and there, was, there were timelines in trying to you know, formulate uh, bringing together all of the, you know, the acts, the ability to put it forward, to advertise, and so forth. And there's no question, there is a, there is a strong desire to try to open up the parks on a number of different fronts. Uh, for activities and bringing people in, this seemed as if it was warranted uh, to kind of crack the egg in an area that we wouldn't normally do so, uh, where there was plenty of lead time. It, timing and, and protocols are what's driving all of this. And, you know, I, I, I don't want to make it seem as if I'm uh, going to be your lawyer, but precedent is, is, is not anything that holds you in perpetuity. These are anomalies. Uh, it, it occurred. There, there was reasoning. There was, there was backup in uh, situations. And if it's not to be uh, continued in a certain fashion, don't accept another special meeting if there was one. Uh, don't, uh, uh, don't pursue it in any fashion. The answer could be no. That was, that was clearly uh, communicated when Mr. Garricks wanted to push this a little bit further that it, it's in the commission's hands the commission may not be may not be amenable to any of this and it will be potentially not agreed upon even for the possible uh, positive outcome it's in their hands and it's still in your hands so my three cents so, so for me the comedy show is less of a concern because it seems like they're that was more of an anomaly. I, my concern more was with the symphony, how they came and it rolled and rolled. And then all of a sudden there, you know, as I understand that they advertised 500 tickets were available. I, I'm just wondering why we're not able to stop them and say, take that off your website. We're not going to allow it in our park system and it hasn't been approved. I don't understand how it got to that without, you know, it sounds more like, well, it kind of happened. It kind of just kept rolling, right? And, and we it, had nothing it, it, to do. That's not what I mean, it was. It just it, seems it like the, it, even if it was the day of and they said we sold 500 tickets, well, it, it's not in our right to say you're not having 500 people in our park. But that's not what we, that wasn't part of the agreement or. Well, I, I, again, that, that I take full responsibility for. The answer to your question is yes, it is. It absolutely is. It was, how did this happen? What are you talking about? Now, what are we going to do with it? You know, can I make the best of this situation with uh, portalettes arriving and people showing up? And how many people are you saying you're bringing in here now? Well, that's a very different situation. Uh, that, that was a, you know, in the moment decision uh, that, that I owe. It's if there's any blame to be had over allowing it to happen in the 11th hour, that's me. Uh, but that doesn't in any way, manner, or form take away your, uh, well, I violated that uh, with you. And again, I, I own that. But that doesn't mean that you don't have that ability. And I, I mean, I'm just trying to, trying to illustrate that, you know, when it seemed that this mistake could potentially happen again, like <laughs> weeks later, uh, I immediately brought it to you. I have no intention of, of letting that occur again. I wanted the symphony to be an anomaly. 
I didn't want Joe Garrick uh, to be a repeat without having you uh, fairly weigh in on it and decide whether or not this was a kind of event that you would want with all the information on the table. So my apologies to the commission, truly, but uh, the comedy show is my attempt at, at, at trying to make amends. Can you get us free tickets, Dimitri? <laughs> you can't. That's quid pro quo, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Just testing them. <laughs> but anything else under anything else under new business? But I just wanted to jump in again um, with regard to the um, the symphony. Gee, are there any um, are there any requests or any future plans for the symphony to come back to India once again? No. They, you know, they, they, they had a great time. You know, they had a good response. If the symphony comes back, uh, you know, as hi, we're going to have a, you know, a, an oboe and a fiddle and three people in the in the uh, the outfield, be my guest. If it's anything that resembles the performance that they just had, it's going to be in your hands. And Liz, Kevin had mentioned that. I mean, it is a for-profit organization. Did they pay a fee for the use of the park for that evening? Yes, they did. They paid the the, the usual uh, park rental fee of fifteen hundred dollars. They paid for police. They paid for uh, ranger staffing. Yeah, they 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 paid all of the associated fees uh, that would normally be for that event that would close down a park. And 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 just so you you know, again, my mistake. It, it didn't even start off like, hi, we're selling tickets to do this. It was, these are, you know, patrons of the Bridgeport Symphony that already have the, you know, the ability to see performances. It, it's a subtle difference, but it, 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 again, it never occurred to me that like, hi, they're selling tickets for a show, uh, you know, that's coming to town. Uh, it, it, it wasn't a Beach Boys event. This was, again, an attempt to try to find a place uh, for classical performers to perform for people that are their patrons. Uh, and um, it, 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 you know, it's subtle, but it got out of hand and uh, we don't want that to happen again. Okay, thank you, Dimitri. Anything else under new business? Um, I, I just have a, a, a question. Uh, do, do we have a program director in the park and rec building? Not currently. Are we are we looking for one there? Uh, that's that's currently in uh, human resources hands. We've uh, we've given all of the uh, updated uh, job descriptions and and requirements to them, but they've been uh, terribly busy with a lot of uh, EMS uh, hires and and whatnot. So we're we're kind of running uh, <laughs> uh, a little limping along. Will, will there be some fall programs? I, I saw in the superintendent's report that there weren't any of yet. Well, there there still isn't any. Uh, I, I can give you more details on that if you'd like. If you want to jump into a superintendent's report. Okay, I can wait. I just I just noticed that was in the written the written part. Okay, well that D. That's the next item on the agenda. So if you want, you can roll right into that. Not a problem. So. Right now, uh, and until there is some kind of uh, communication that's open opens up with Superintendent Simmons, I think is his name. Uh, I think it's his first day today, actually, uh, and the Board of Ed as to whether or not there will be any access to uh, the elementary schools or any school space. It's very likely there will be no fall or winter programs whatsoever. Uh, we are very, very dependent upon all of the schools uh, and, and of course, just the, uh, the, the the one space that we do have under our control, which is the, uh, the barn, we we would not have any practical places to run any kind of programs. Uh, we have been reaching out for many, many, many months, uh, but as you, I'm sure you can understand, uh, the school has their own challenges to just try to open up uh, <laughs> just for classes and uh, the scholastic programs. Uh, but it is a, a significant uh, concern of mine. Uh, I've let everybody know at the administrative level 
I'm having ongoing conversations with whomever I can at BOE, but uh, as it stands right now, there is no, no ability for us to gain access to anything. Part of that actually even plays into uh, the expansion, uh, and Ed can, can speak to this to some degree, uh, of, of the scholastic athletic programs, which are spread out over more space than ever before uh, in an effort to uh, maintain the, the, the safety protocols that are placed upon them, the SEAC rules, the state health department, et cetera. So everything is being made more difficult. Uh, what we would normally have for uh, space up at the campus for a lot of our, our fall programs are being pushed further and further out because the time on them for just the, the SEAC programs are that much more. Well, so see, I, I was going to say, SEAC wants to move forward, and obviously uh, the uh, you know public work, uh, public health uh, commissioner is holding back. So there's, you know, they're allowing them to do what they want, but they're not getting the approval of the uh, public health department for the state. So what they're recommending is that these sports like football be moved to the spring. Volleyball, they're going to try to do what mass in the, you know, in the games, you know, just two parents allowed in the stands. Um, it's literally a nightmare to even to try to figure this thing out. So, no, it's, it's impossible. It, it, so it truly the best impossible. thing for them to do is probably just can everything until after the, you know, after the, this year and just go into spring where there might be more information on how to do all this, you know. Well, what's unfortunately uh, happened is that you know, in an attempt, uh, you know, to try to, I know, weave through the rule, uh, everything's happening simultaneously. I think I actually put that in one of my earlier reports. You could sort of see it. It was, it was, uh, was forming on the uh, horizon. Like, oh my God, if this happens simultaneously, where's everybody going to go? And everybody is going to be, you know, rabid uh, for field space. And they are. Uh, and so, you know, with, with trying to honor the usual uh, priorities, the schools and the school programs in whatever form they take, get the first bite of the apple. Uh, in so doing, it, it just creates a ripple effect across everything. So if you're planning on, you know, uh, fixing a field, people are screaming at you that well, we should be there because I can't play anywhere else. And it, it goes on and on. Yeah, to Nancy's yeah. point, uh, you know, uh, if the same things already happened in all of the, the schools. Uh, they're spread out more than they ever were inside. So with, with hopes of being able to sustain some kind of a fall or winter program in whatever form that takes, uh, where they wouldn't normally be. Uh, we have, you know, it's made absolutely clear we'll never get into the high school. We'll not get in any way uh, near the middle schools under any circumstances because they're completely booked out. Uh, we would be thrilled if we could start an open dialogue and try to formulate some type of a, you know, a, a smaller, different kind of offering just using the elementary schools. And thus far, we have been completely thwarted. So, yay. <laughs> <laughs> that's uplifting. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, the w welcome to D's world. Uh, we, we, could, we could segue into... Um, the pool, that's a, uh, that's, that's a topic uh, that's, uh, well, a, a daily headache, shall I say. Uh, some of the same uh, situations occur around that as well. So as, as you well know, we, we care for the Hillcrest pool. We pay for custodial services. We make all of our, all of the repairs. The town pays for that, or we physically do the work at this point. Um, we had to go through quite a, an elaborate process just to get my King's swim team in there for a single block, uh, five days a week. Everything else thus far is held hostage. And I don't want it to sound like somebody's being mean spirited about it, but that's the way that it feels, um, to whether or not the school can provide custodial services to do a sanitary protocol between each group. So 
so that those are the current guidelines that we're we're working under. Even if the town is paying for the custodial services as yeah, we have in the past, the school may not be able to provide the custodian to actually do it because of the increased protocols that they have to implement. So that would mean that they have to get, or somehow or another, you would need to get more custodians to do this whole thing. And well, and it, it just it just ravels out from there. Uh, is it a union issue? Is it a, is it a full-time position? Is it what, and so basically the, the pool may not be available for anything. Uh, right so right now with the custodial situation in, in the uh, high school, I mean, all the efforts are being used to try to at least even feed these kids lunch and clean yep. all the tables. I mean, I'm there every day. It's, it's, it's four hours during the day just trying to manage what you have there. So anything being done anywhere else is a, a low priority over getting the kids through their day, you know? It's, it's you need about 15 custodials. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. Absolutely. And that's not going to happen anytime soon, I don't think. So well, we have you, some you, issues. You, you, would, you would hope that there would be a way to, to do that for the, the scholastic program. And in that, you know, as you, you know, bring in that additional necessary help to make it work, yeah. therefore it, it allows for more opportunities for other groups such as ourselves. Yeah, but the necessary help right now is administrators, security, teachers, all trying to pitch in to get through the day of cleaning tables and things like that. So they, you know, with Marty coming in, with the new guy coming in, I mean, there has to be some decisions made on going forward here because it, it just can't go on like we've done the last week and a half. Oh, I, I, I'm, I, I'm well aware. Take a ride to the high school and see the tables for lunch in front of the auditorium. I mean, it's, it's crazy. There's another 50, 100 tables outside of the cafeteria just to feed the kids. Because it's just two to a table, and in the big tables, it's three kids to a table. It, it, it's it difficult. Doesn't work. It, 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 it doesn't just doesn't work. work. It's uh, very difficult. And I don't want to give anybody the impression that I'm not uh, – uh, empathetic and understanding and and actually believe in prioritizing the you know uh, the, the the children's scholastic program <laughs> over our needs but at the same time we do have various user groups that we represent as well and they are some of them that are actually there so they don't even believe that you know it it, it shouldn't be another way uh, the the calls that we receive on a daily basis the emails the uh, you know, the grinding of teeth and uh, stamping of feet, why we can't do this and why this doesn't exist and why this doesn't uh, that's happen. All above, that's all above our pay grade. It, it is, but, but I, do, I do need to report it to you uh, yeah. and, and uh, let you know that we're aware of it and where the obstructions are. Again, <laughs> not, not for without legitimate cause, but there are obstructions that prov prevent us from actually being able uh, to answer these questions and, uh, you know, uh, in a manner that would probably normally be just as a matter of fact, and we'll make it work. It it just doesn't happen now, so that's uh, that's uh, more good news there. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's, let's 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 add some more good news to the, to the list of uh, sad songs from Dimitri today. Uh, <laughs> since last we spoke, uh, we had uh, the visit from. Uh, Super, I well, we won't call it Superstorm. We'll just call it Tropical Storm Isaiah. Well, Tropical Storm Isaiah uh, did a whole heck of a lot of damage since uh, we, we last really spoke about the park system. Uh, we're, we're still picking up from that. Uh, significant amounts of, of, of tree damage, a lot of damage in the rails, the trails, things that are still showing themselves uh, as we speak, uh, you know, things that have been damaged that didn't initially show uh, failure or, or, or problems are now are, are now withering and dying or fa literally falling off the trees. Uh, so we're um, wherever we can, we're still trying to button up our own system to make sure that we don't, uh, you know, pave the way for a, a, an even less pleasant spring 2021. We've got to make sure that everything is teed up as we possibly can, but at the same time, make the system uh, as safe as we can, where we can. So we've been forced to close areas down for, for weeks on end if, 
if you've been by Vietnam, Vietnam sort of like one of the last uh, holdouts where we just there's not that much foot traffic there, but the, but the tree damage is devastating. There are uproots, down, snaps, ev everywhere. Uh, so we're we're spending a lot of money. We're spending a lot of time uh, just trying to you know put the system back together again. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed. Uh, before winter before winter closes in on us, uh, we'll have a solid uh, handle on that. Uh, if you were down by beaches, we even use beaches as a temporary holding area for a lot of the brush. Uh, we've we've uh, processed a lot of that material uh, into into fine mulch, which we'll use uh, and get out of there as soon as possible. Uh, but uh, cer certainly not the w anything that's consistent the way that we would normally run the system. Uh, and if you've seen it or, 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 or areas that still have been uh, uh, undercared for or still in a state of uh, disrepair, uh, my apologies, but we are trying to get to it as quickly as possible. Uh, I, I guess the last one that I'll just point out is we have a, a new vandal in town who's taking it upon themselves to damage our entry signs. Uh, it somehow determine that uh, a bumper of a car or a truck or whatever in the right spot will either snap the granite posts or the signs off of them. Uh, those are rather expensive and not something that we're going to be able to rapidly replace either. Uh, yeah, they're just trying to prioritize costs. So there may be parks that don't have signs uh, for some time. Uh, if this continues, I really don't have an answer. The Rangers are where to keep an eye out and uh, the police as well. And uh, hopefully uh, that comes to an end before uh, we have too much more damage. That's too bad. Let me stop there before I depress you all. <laughs> <laughs> Anything, any other questions? Hey, it's Ken Martin again. Uh, can you give us an update on the bike path expansion on Long White Plains Road? Um, what's the, um, the plan there for uh, their finishing schedule? I mean, uh, you're probably um, in direct contact with um, the state. I'm just wondering if you could um, just give us a brief summary of what's happening and when we can expect that to be completed. Completed, actually, I do not have an answer. I think what they're trying to do is all of the, uh, as much of the concrete work from uh, Trumbull Center uh, to uh, the Vietnam Memorial. Uh, that's, that's essentially all that's happening in that run. The last piece of the, the work for the rails to trails connection all takes place on Tate Road. So there's a lot of reconfiguration that's gonna be going on there both in terms of the parking area, uh, there'll be plantings of some sort or another that are incorporated into the final design, new fencing, uh, privacy fencing, guardrails, things of that nature. I don't know if that will be done this year. Uh, my understanding was they were just gonna try to get as, as much of the paving done before uh, winter uh, came in. So my guess is by spring of 2021, that connection should be completed. Um, my understanding as of actually today that their uh, economic development is trying to uh, seek funding both in terms of more grant uh, grant opportunities and municipal funding to extend it even further. They would like the, the, the sidewalks to go all the way down uh, below the, the uh, Merritt Parkway Bridge at Unity. So that would be like a really a big long stretch but, but there's nothing that's slated to uh, actually occur this year with any of that so paving 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 through the center for now uh, most likely Tate Road by 2021 D will there be more parking at Tate Road or less or the same less well that's too bad <laughs> can we do a double decker <laughs> Well, you know, now there's a, no parking signs all along those side streets. So it, the trail is more popular than ever with all the limited other options for residents. And, um, you know, I, I really wish we could put some space lines up at Whitney Avenue, too, because the parking is so haphazard that, uh, you know, it's not efficient the way people park up there. 
and um, it's, it's hard sometimes to find a spot. I'm not sure whether or not some of the, you know, some of that will lessen with uh, people availing themselves of uh, parking in the, you know, in the CVS and in the center. I know that's not ideal, but there, there's no way that Tate Road in any uh, configuration currently is either going to either not be a, uh, a tremendous burden on the, the residents as they go down uh, without those those no parking signs. Believe me, that's what it would be. Uh, but but it's at, at and beyond capacity and has been probably for the last year. Uh, you know, there have been, been a many, many uh, considerations about, you know, putting additional parking behind uh, the Helen Plum. But none of those things have actually come to fruition. We don't have any permitting for it or funding to do so. But, but there's no question that uh, Tate Road a, as, a, as a parking space, uh, as a trailhead at this point, is, is grossly insufficient. Okay, anyone else? Any other questions for Dimitri regarding his superintendent's report? Okay, next item on the agenda is the park ranger report. You were, you were sent the park ranger report. Do you have any commissions, questions regarding the report that maybe Dee could answer? No, anything else? Okay, I see that you just signed on. Is there anything that you'd, you'd like to say? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I just uh, popped down late here. I just, if anyone has any questions for me, I did uh, attend the uh, orchestra concert uh, last Saturday night or the Saturday night before, I guess it is now. So, um, you know, just uh, here to answer any questions you may have. It was a great concert. If anyone, uh, I'm sure you heard, uh, may have heard some, some feedback. Um, everyone that attended that concert um, was so complimentary to Trumbull. And there were many Trumbull residents there who belonged to the symphony. Uh, and it was an opportunity uh, for everybody to have a night out, social distancing, uh, and enjoy uh, the, the symphony. So it really was, a, I thought, a great evening. Really showed off the, uh, the venue, mm -hmm. that beautiful venue that we have. Did you get in, any impression from the symphony that they may be interested in using our venue for future events? I did. But that's exactly what they said to me. As a matter of fact, they'd like to talk about it. Uh, because it, it again, uh, for an outdoor venue um, in this area, it's probably maybe the one and only place you could do something like that. Uh, because literally, there were, they said 400 people there, but it looked like there were 25 because that space is so big. Uh, and as I said, everyone was social distanced. They had um, temperature checks when you came in. Uh, and uh, it was just, you know, it was just run very well by, by, the, by the orchestra. And of course, you know, Dimitri did a great job, you know, making sure that it looked as nice as it was up there. It was beautiful. So they are interested. Um, it's what, if, if you're interested uh, in, in doing that. Well, obviously that's something that they would have to come and present to us. Yes. Yeah. And I'm sure that they would be more than happy to, to do that. They did speak of, of perhaps doing some sort of a series of concerts next summer, like once a month uh, up at Indian Ledge. Okay, anything else? Anybody else have anything that they would like to bring up or any more questions for the first select woman? All right, do I have a motion to adjourn? Seconds. I'll second. Ed, second. Ann Bryan. Okay. All in favor, just give a wave. Okay. And what we'll do is um, I wanted to try to get back on track so that we'll, we'll meet every month at our regularly 
second Monday of the month. And um, Vicki, any, any idea of maybe when we could get back in the town hall? Well, I, you know, at this point, the governor's orders of running these meetings in this way are still in, uh, you know, what we're working with, uh, as are all towns. Uh, so until those are relaxed um, and we can have in-person meetings and be properly social distanced in an area to do that, uh, virtual meetings will continue for the foreseeable future. Okay. Okay. So I, th I think we're finally getting this format down. <laughs> okay. So we are adjourned. So uh, we'll see you next month. Any, if anything comes up, just email us.